Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we are going to have another exciting preview for you on the channel. We are going to look at the upcoming Just Flight PA28R-201 Arrow 3. That's the full name for it. It is obviously the uh, Piper Arrow. This one includes retractable landing gear a constant speed propeller and a bit more fuel in the Arrow 3 version so it makes it a really nice sort of touring aircraft and IFR aircraft as we'll see inside. The Just Flight team have been kind enough to send one over for a preview video so I hope you enjoy it. No review today we are just going to take it out for a flight and uh, have a look at it, do some maneuvering in the sky, a bit of start up, listen to some of the sounds and uh, just see what it's all about really. This is a preview build so we could find some bugs and so on uh, but those are all uh, in the work still it's still a work in progress we're here in uh, kirk newton raf kirk newton in edinburgh where we are going to start up head out and go for a flight go and see some of the sites added in the recent uk update by microsoft and uh, then go and find a, a little airfield somewhere to land at right let's get started first of all i want to get uh, a bit of a overview of the exterior you can see here they've even included tie downs which is a really nice detail i do like that and you get these really great texturing on the the panels and you can see the grime there behind the uh, the main landing gear which is uh, obviously pretty typical you get bits of grease coming off the oleos and uh, other moving parts especially on retractable uh, undercarriage aircraft like this but also obviously the mud and dirt and so on from the wheels depending where this one's been flying although it's not not too bad a shape but yeah it's uh, it's really nice we've got the flaps down it seems to have loaded up in that position i'm guessing that's how it's stored overnight but again not sure and then obviously all the riveting nice uh, texturing on the stickers and so on so yeah really a sort of full experience of a general aviation aircraft it's uh, it really really takes me back to the general aviation that i wish i could uh, wish i could do so yeah enjoying that so we're going to come up on, on up and uh, jump into the flight deck i'm not sure actually let's see yeah probably going to be a get in from this side only put your feet up there on the grip tape and in we go now if i jump into the flight deck I'll have to cheat, but all these things are adjustable, so we can open the cabin door, open the baggage door, open the oil door. And there you go. It gives you a bit more of the uh, the full experience. Right, let's, uh, let's take our seat and go and enjoy this lovely weather for this flight. Really looking forward to it. Bit of a look around the cockpit and you'll see, yeah, just lovely textures. These are older aircraft these days. This was first built in 1977, although I'm not sure when this model was built, but that's when uh, when they started building the Arrow 3. So they're going to show a bit of wear, some of the older style dials. It is possible to change over your GPS as well. If you click on this little tablet, you can have no GPS or just the, sorry, the GPS 100 over there, which is included. GPS 430 and the more familiar 530 that we see uh, in, in some other simulators. I'm going to Go with that one for today i need to learn the, uh, the the more simple 100 but yeah there you go you can see all around really nice love the red interior a few liveries included obviously but this is the one i've gone for today nice little curtains so yeah you could see yourself sitting in this for a bit of a longer flight than uh than maybe uh, the more simple ones right let's get uh let's get some things sorted out so we can close the oil and baggage door those on the outside the cabin door you can actually close yourself so that says latch, so that's going to be out. We're going to close it like that and then latch it down. Right, you're going to watch me attempt to set up a general aviation airplane. It's been a bit of a while. Now, there are a few things we would check on the outside, but I'm going to gloss over those a little, a little bit. Um, we are going to uh, basically need to do some obvious things. So we've got the, I'm going to click of get rid of the yoke just to make it a bit more obvious, but the starter's off, the magnetos are off and the masters are off, the fuel's in cut off. So that is a good place to start. So let's turn on the battery. Things come to life now. We have enough fuel for what we're planning to do. Although I remember fuel gauges on aircraft of this size are typically uh, advisory only. You don't want to put too much uh, weight behind them. Uh, and otherwise, things are looking pretty good. I'm just going to check we have some control over the flaps because they should be working now. There they go. So those are working. And the circuit breakers are in. What I might do, and what you would have done by this point as well, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the tie downs on the outside. Uh, and the chocks really um parking brake is set that's this here so you want to make sure that is oh there you go squeezed and up now we don't want to sit here for too long because our battery could discharge so uh, we're going to get ourselves 
powered up fairly shortly. We're going to do that before we fiddle around with any more avionics. So we're going to come down onto uh, this wall here, turn on a fuel tank. You can only do one tank at a time. It's a very simple system. We're going to move the propeller lever fully forward for engine start. It's quite typical in this size of aircraft. And uh, we'll do a bit of a throttle. Just give it a bit of uh, a bit of throttle there. So it's uh, ready if we to give it uh, a start. Right, we need alternate air sets to close, which it is up here. Okay, so battery master is now is on. I mean, you might have had it off before you did those things, I suppose. Uh, but there we go. So that is on. Let's turn on the uh, rotating beacon at least. Give the people outside a chance to know that we're starting up our engine, and you'd shout outside clear prop at some point around now. Okay, so we've turned on the fuel pump. Mixture is forward, and we get a fuel flow being displayed down here. Once that's done, we can check. We'll do our clear prop, and let's get it fired up. I'll stop talking, let you listen to the audio. There we go, so let's bring that throttle back a bit. Let's get the alternator on so we can start charging up our battery. And now we want to sit at about 1400 to 1500 RPM. Bit less throttle, there we go. And uh, we should have some sort of uh, gyro suction. There we go, so things are coming to life in front of us. Right now we could fit around with the avionics if we need it so the GPS is on and so on, but we're not gonna focus too much on that. Let's uh, Let's, save that for a future video now we started up i think it's time we go and get ourselves into the air something i do like to see is the way the aircraft is jostling around on its uh on its suspension sitting there with the propeller running which is pretty pretty true to life on these general aviation airplanes it's nice to see that modeled they've really captured that general avi aviation spirit with this uh, with this airplane definitely Something I haven't done for a while are power checks. Airliner aircraft don't do these, but uh, we are going to. So we should be sitting with, as we said, about 1400 RPM uh, sat on the ground. You don't want to sit it right at idle. It can foul the spark plugs and so on. And the engines aren't very happy with it, but there we go. Right, what we're going to do is rev up the engine and do a magneto check. So I'm going to go to 2000 RPM. I've got the parking brake set for this one. And then we should see a dip in the RPM. whenever we selected each magneto side, which we do. While we're here, I'm gonna do a propeller RPM check. So you bring that back and you can check that that RPM does drop. So it's all modeled, which is great. Sort of exercising the constant speed propeller control. We can see our manifold pressure as well as our fuel flow down there. Let's set up some sort of uh, reasonable course for where we are going up here. The avionics is a bit of a mystery to me. It's something I need to spend a bit of time looking at uh, the longer we have with this uh, aircraft, but there we go. We're gonna use it for what, uh, what I hope uh, this sort of thing is good for, which is a bit of VFR cruising. Time to get ourselves underway. So we're gonna use the first stage of flap for takeoff. Again, this is not a tutorial. This is just me sort of finding my way through using the manual. They do have a great manual supplied with this. Uh, so that's been really handy. And we're going to go to full power in a second and rotate around 65 knots. So let's release that parking brake. Oh, hold it on the tow brakes. Right, let's give ourselves some power. Brakes released. Let's go. Taking a bit of yaw because, of course, big single uh, propeller at the front there. Oh, as ever, Microsoft's... Uh, Sensitivity is a bit of an issue on the ground. There's 65 knots. Get that nose up. Letting it weather cock now. And something to remember. Positive climb. That's right. Gear up. Gear lever comes up. It's got a few systems in this airplane to warn us if there's any issues. Pretty good climb rate for a general aviation plane. This is a real cruiser. You can tell. Reminds me a bit of like a TB20 style airplane. And off we go. 
glorious, glorious. Right, I'm going to start coming around to the left as we head over to the coast. Start to pick out uh, Edinburgh Town. Let's go and see a few of the sites over there. We'll climb up to, let's try, uh, let's go up to 2,000 feet for our, our sort of cruising segment of the flight today. Get those flaps up now. Start accelerating. Here we go now then. Just going to lower that power. You'll get that gear warning horn you can see because, of course, it's concerned that I have the throttle right back and yet I haven't got the landing gear out. But what I'm doing is we're just going to get ourselves a bit lower and there you can just about see Edinburgh Castle. So actually, let's do a turn to the right. And then we can do a nice sort of left turn around the castle. There it is. So this is a really nice aeroplane for flying around in general aviation. It runs at a nice pace. You've got enough speed to get to places, but uh, not too much for missing the scenery. Oh, they've got an animated flag down there as well now. That's good. I hadn't seen that before. <laughs> There's Princess Street. Do we have the monument as well? No, the monument's not there. Although the shadow is. <laughs> There's the Scott monument that's uh, missing, but the shadow for it is there. Oh, uh, well. Right, let's head over to... Obviously, we've got to go and see the bridges. Something else that I'm noticing is the quality of the sounds, especially outside. You get the sound effects of the propeller wash if you put the camera behind the propeller. Also, wheels touching down, things like that. Here's something I always like. I'm always looking for details. As we head over to the bridges, look, we can open or close our little window. Very much appreciate little details like that. Always nice. And this sun visor. If the sun is getting too much for you, you can bring that down to to protect yourself from the glare of the sun. So again, really nice to see these little things added in. Back when I used to do general aviation, one of my favourite times to fly was of course around sort of dusk. So just as that sun's going down, absolutely beautiful time to fly, especially in the, the summer with those warm evenings. And again, it's really nice to sort of capture that with this uh, with this aeroplane. Not that, not that I'd open the window even then. Nice to have the sunshade as well. It works quite well at blinding, blocking out the, uh, the blinding light of the sun. So that's quite a, a nice detail. Um, and uh, we can just sit here and cruise our way over enjoying the the sunset what better way to do it than in an airplane no doubt no doubt in terms of performance i'm not noticing any uh, frame rate issues compared with the default general aviation style aircraft it doesn't seem to be any more taxing it is a preview build though so i won't go into any more detail until we we have the, the sort of final release but yeah it's uh seems to be running lovely and smoothly for me and it just looks fantastic. Really nice to see the, the detail we can get now in uh, in Flight Simulator. Let's see if we get all those nav lights on. There we go. As it's starting to get a bit gloomy out there. Before we do land, something I, I just want to try is let's have a bit of a go at stalling. So I'm just going to bring the power right off, which does set off that warner. And if we pull the nose up. I can hear it so you can hear that sort of rumble and then you can hear the stool warner so the gear horn is intermittent the stool warner is continuous so we'll lower the nose had power of course it is possible to stall even with power on so let's try that might avoid getting that uh, <laughs> gear horn at the same time so let's give it a stall here and you can hear that rattling 
and the wing starts to go down. Now it's got nice stall characteristics. It's designed to do with the shape of the wing. So uh, yeah, that, that is it's very, very straightforward to recover from the stall in this airplane. Just put the nose down. It doesn't seem too prone to wing dropping. So yeah, lovely. One last thing I wanted to see before we head over and land at uh, somewhere slightly different from where we took off was the Kelpies. These have been added in the recent update and they, uh, they're they the largest statue of horses, I believe, in the world based on Kelpies, a mythical creature. I think they're 30 meters tall and it's nice or great to see them represented in a, uh, a flight simulator. So there they are. Really, uh, really interesting. I, 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 uh, I've never visited them in real life, although I really wanted to. They're just uh, such a spectacular sculpture. Look at that, how bizarre. Right, let's go and land. So we're going to go ahead and land here at Cumbernauld, which is a, a civilian little airport used often for training both helicopters and fixed wing. So it seemed like an appropriate place to bring our Piper Arrow 3. There we go. Nice short little runway. Give it a bit of uh, a bit of a chance to try out this airplane on a, a normal sort of general aviation airstrip. Looking forward to this. So we'll just turn downwind here, get a bit of height off, bring that power back, lowering the gear. We'll to stop that warning constantly going at us. <laughs> and now we want to bring that uh, prop and our mixture, RPM and mixture up to the maximum. Get that speed back, get the first stage of flap out. Heading downwind now, there's the threshold, so probably a little bit high. As I finally set the correct Q&H, there we go, right, second stage of flap. 75 knots on the final approach is the target speed. Still got a little bit of that trim required, I think. Bit of uh, your There we go. And let's go for full flap. Don't want to come down any more. 75 knots, there we go. Actually, I think I think we're supposed to be approaching maybe a little bit faster, 85 knots, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try this one out. Let's give it a go. Let me just uh, hit record, see if we can get a replay on this one if we need it, <laughs> if it goes well enough. Oh, coming a little bit low there. Pretty short runway. Speeds washing off, so adding a bit of thrust. Landing into sun like this can be a bit of an issue. Much nicer to land with it behind you. Try and put a bit of the sunshade down. There we go. Proving useful for us. Now it is sensitive in pitch because, of course, we have the prop wash going right over that uh, the elevator in this airplane. Let's see if we can get it right on the numbers. Okay, thrust to idle, getting into the flare, getting the nose up, holding it there, bit of a float, let it settle, there we go, bit of yaw to the right, let that nose wheel come down. There we go, a completed flight. See if we can gently get on those toe brakes without wobbling all over the place. There we are, right. Fantastic, we are down. Let's go and uh, get ourselves out of the way, back to the clubhouse for a well-earned uh, cup of tea. Very maneuverable on the ground. <laughs> Look at that. Right, let's go and see. Now this is the much nicer way to land when you have the shadow behind you. So that's all for today's video. Thank you very much to Just Flight again for sending over this preview version of the Piper PA-28R Arrow 3. But uh, yeah, really, really interesting airplane. Nice to have the complex set of uh, retractable landing gear and adjustable propeller. Nice cruising speed and good fun. There'll be a full review coming later on, but uh, for now, this is just a, a bit of a, a sneak preview of what's what's to come for this airplane in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm not sure of the release date, but I imagine it can't be too far away now, but we shall have to wait and see what Just Flight say on that. Thank you very much for watching. Do please leave your thoughts uh, and uh, opinions in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, there'll be plenty more of this sort of thing on the channel. Plenty of Flight Simulator content as well as uh, obviously Airbus. 
guides and uh, more streams coming very soon to the channel. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again in another video or stream very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.